Well, there is my router table. This is the router top, and this is Ron Fox. In no order of importance, Ron. Yeah. Except that Absolutely. you're very important and you come at the end. Yeah. <laughs> How are but you? I'm not so bad. Good Thank to you. see you again. Yes, nice to see you again, John. I uh, just want to talk about the, the top that uh, we've made here. Um, it's 18 mil ply, birch face ply, same material that uh, I've used for the, uh, for the base. And I've laminated it uh, with some formica, both sides. If you're laminating anything, you must do both sides to balance it out. Because unbelievably, although formica is really thin, it will make it sag. It certainly it? will. It will just, yes. just a sheer weight of that will, will make the top sag. So I've done that. And also I've trimmed it out with a piece of uh, hardwood I had knocking around the shop. And uh, is that okay for you, That's sir? That's fine, yes. A thumbs up. That should do the job. Excellent. So what we're going to do now, we're going to uh, mount the router in it. So we're going to invert the router so it effectively becomes like a, a mini spindle yep. molder. Mm -hmm. So it's a really effective way of using the router. Yes, it? indeed. Okay. Yeah. So, I mean, what options are there for us to, to, to do this? Well, the first and the easiest would be to bolt the router straight underneath the table with a hole in there for the cutter to come up through. Right. The trouble with that is that with 18 millimetres, you're going to lose depth of cut. Right. The next common method is to have a plate set in the top, which is, might be plastic, might be metal, and it might be about three-eighths of an inch. A third option, and a rather more sophisticated one, is this one, where we've got a three-sixteenth steel plate. Right. And the router is carried underneath. And the great thing about this one is that there is a winding handle that very precisely right. takes your router up and down. So that pops in. Ah, yes. Okay. And it overcomes one of the great problems of using a router table, which is to get underneath it to change your cutters or to set the height. To set the height. I mean, yeah. that's the one thing that I always struggle with, is setting the height. Yeah. Because if you've got a big router in there, they are really heavy. They are heavy, they? yes. And even with a plunge bar yes. uh, and a fine, fine adjustment on it, I always struggle. OK, so we're going to cut this into here. Well, yeah. I say we, of course, that is the royal we, because Ron is actually going to do it. Yeah. <laughs> so what have you done, Ron? Just explain it to us. Well, I've drawn the actual shape of the plate that we're going to set in. Yeah. And I've got a guide bush on it, which will set the cut far enough away from the edge that we can go right through the middle with the required hole. I noticed uh, you were going clockwise direction. Is, is there an important kind of element to that? That cutter as we look down on it is rotating in a clockwise direction yep so as we come up here we are going against the resistance of a cutter that wants to come back to us and at the same time the rotation force is holding it in and it's one of the golden rules one of the really basic rules of routing clockwise around the inside of a figure anti-clockwise around the outside that's a really good tip. And that balance. preserves the correct direction of cut from first principles. There we are. So we're more or less done there, right? We're, we're through. through. Hey, look at that. And that's a fairly neat cut. That's a very neat cut, isn't it? Certainly much neater than you'd get using a jigsaw. Yeah, and the golden rule is never mind the workpiece, the waste always comes out perfect. OK. <laughs> yes. <laughs> what I've got in there now is a three-quarter inch diameter cutter with a bearing on it yep. and that's going to cut a recess to whatever depth we set it okay and we need to make it three sixteenths of an inch deep okay Ron I've got the router lid yeah you've cut the hole yes do you think it's gonna fit we'll see won't <laughs> we moment of truth here we go oh what a stroke oh, of luck that's perfect look at that well, as you can see, we've now got the router fitted to the base plate and uh, it's, it's inverted. It, it is, in indeed. In the table, which is a posh word for upside, upside down. Upside down. I believe. But uh, I think let's have a look on the top at the business end. And we've got the, the winding handle. We, we've yeah. also put a cutter in place. So, I mean, you've done all the hard work today, Ron, let's be honest. But can I have the glory job and wind you up can the cutter? It's very kind. It's all hard, old Ron, isn't it? Yes. Exactly. Here it comes. Got a little moulding cutter in there. <laughs> That's great. I mean, I have to say, Ron, this really does take the effort out of, of, of raising the cutter up and down because anybody that's used a router table will know it, it is a problem, even it's with a plunge bar, It is it? the it is, basic it, problem. It is tables. hard work, but that's really fantastic. Well, I think what we should do is, is now push a piece of timber through. Yeah. There you are, John. That's, That's the inaugural great, cut on your new router table. Oh, how exciting. Hmm? How exciting. Well, thank you very much for your help today. That's been a pleasure. As always, it's yes. brilliant. Yeah. You're, you're a genius, sir. 
I always, I never not meet you and come away with new things. So thank you very much. Well, thank you for saying that. We'll see you again yep, soon. We will indeed.